So, when a person, uh, and, and it's a very, very good question, why uh, do seemingly sane people do such horrific um, acts? And I think, quite honestly, the, the answer is staring you right in the face. First of all, you've got to define what, what make, and you've got to understand what makes a person go bad. Okay, so by a person, or by, by society's definition, a person goes bad when they A, um, do not conform to the standards of society, B, act out in a way that's against society, or C, do something that's immoral, um, that's, you know, defilable, disgraceful, uh, you know, all, all of that kind of stuff. Basically something that goes against the natural order of things. Um, and I'll give you a prime example. For me, when I watch, uh, and, I, and I, I'm not a big fan, you know, of, of uh, a lot of David Attenborough's programs because of this very reason. But when, when I see an animal um, ripped to pieces, or I see an animal eaten, or I see a baby chick eaten by a seagull, or I see, you know, a, a, a seal, you know, that is just tortured and alone and miserable get eaten by whales, uh, all of these, by the way, are on David Attenborough's programs. Um, it makes my stomach turn, and um, David Attenborough backs them. And uh, you know, quite honestly, I I, uh, I, I do not, you know, I, I do not advocate David Attenborough in the slightest. And they come back with, you know, well, it's nature. We hate seeing it too, but. Well, if you really hated seeing it, then you wouldn't put it out there. And for any person that comes back and says, well, it's nature, then you can also, you know, if you're going to throw that one out there, then that's a dangerous game to play because it's in human beings' nature to be conquerors, to pillage, to be savage, to be all of those things. And again, this often comes from people that have no idea what they're talking about. With all due respect, you know, they really, really don't. It's, it's a pre... Uh, prescribed verse that you've been taught that oh it's nature so it's acceptable so with that in mind let's take a look at a uh, human beings nature why do um, some people do you know just absolutely crazy and insane acts and again the answer is staring you right in the face they do crazy and insane acts usually because uh, usually because of experience of extreme trauma in their childhood, uh, or certainly in the teenage life, or, or some form of trauma full stop. And it's usually very, very severe. There may have been an underlying mental health condition there already, and this is just triggered. And it could be, you know, as I said, that, and that's one possibility, it could be trauma. Uh, where something has happened, a person has really hurt them, a group has really hurt them, um, and they are going to evoke revenge um, upon, you know, upon this uh, person, this group, this uh, situation, whatever it might be. That is one possible thing. The second thing, you know, quite, quite, again, quite obviously, is medication. Uh, we live in a world now where basically we, we've probably got more medications readily available than they did in uh, in Victorian London. Um, and that's saying something, because literally you could walk down to the corner, you know, drugstore and buy opium and laudanum and, uh, and cocaine and, you know, all sorts of things. You know, it, it was there in Redful Supply. Um, and and, and in, in a multitude of different, um, you know, methods of, of consumption. So, you know, that, that's, that's another option that's there. Uh, but you combine those two together and you make for a whirlwind of absolute disaster. And I know in my own life, you know, when I felt hard done by, I felt that, you know, the church had, uh, you know, I, I'd given my all to the church and the church, you know, that, that I had worked for, I really felt it turned its back on me and the people that I worked with. Um, you know, and, and this, this is the crazy thing. And, and the wonderful thing is, I was saying this to a, a, a business colleague of mine, a, a dear friend of mine actually recently, I said, it's really, really interesting that, you know, when people act out, the organization usually wants to distance themselves as much from the person as possible and say, oh, you know, well, we never knew, we never had anything to do with it, you know, we, we didn't do this, we didn't do that, we didn't do that. And I find it so interesting 
that they are willing to completely deny any form of, uh, you know, not necessarily responsibility, but, you know, the, the whole idea of duty of care. So when a person acts out, uh, they are acting out usually because they have experienced, you know, severe emotional trauma. Uh, because the medication is there, because of a lack of support, because of, you know, possibly because of underlying issues that were already, you know, there and already existing. And when they don't know how to deal with that, as I didn't, uh, you know, that turns to anger, you know, and, and you get an angry person that's got, you know, medical issues and mental health issues and, uh, and that's on medication at the same time, and that person's annoyed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, so it is no surprise. It really is no surprise at all. But the crazy thing is, nobody then turns around and says, you know, well, the institution, you know, I don't know, the person has to take responsibility and say, look, you know, I, I'm, I'm this way because I'm not doing my own, you know, self-management. I'm not taking care of myself. I'm allowing myself to get this angry. But when a person's in that state, and, and I, I call it the intoxicated mind, because a person literally that is of that level of anger and again if they've got issues that are going on and things that are happening um you know that person is not thinking clearly uh or, or in fact let's scratch that they are thinking clearly but their thoughts are in a state of downward spiral so what you get is you know there's this really angry person that's you know going to lash out and, and it, it, it should come as no surprise. It really should come as no surprise at all. Um, do I think that that person's a bad person? Uh, I, I don't necessarily see good and bad, you know, and, and, uh, and right and wrong and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the same with a lot of people do. You could have a very, very good seeming person that has, like I say, immense trauma, um, you know, immense pressures, not able to look after themselves, you fill in the blank that acts out does a horrific action and this and obviously we've seen this before this is an area that i'm, I'm beginning to study more and more with uh, neurobiology is, uh, is is the people that you know are completely normal you know that there was a professional wrestler who apparently was the nicest guy in the world and uh, he murdered his his wife and family um, there was a, a soldier who knew that he was going, um, I guess the, the, the terminology that you would possibly, you know, class for the best one that I have, for lack of a better term, is insane. Um, and he uh, actually wrote a letter to his mother and to his grandmother uh, saying, you know, should this letter be found, blah, 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 blah. And basically laying out what he was going to do. And he went up, I believe it was in Texas, he went up, he got a gun. He went on top of a roof and he shot 13 people. And I believe, I don't believe anyone was killed. Maybe there was one that was killed. Um, and the police, you know, the SWAT team basically went up and killed them. Um, what makes seemingly normal people lose their mind in such a way? Again, I think it's very, very simple. And I think it's very obvious immense trauma will do some really ungodly things mix that with medication and that is going to make for one explosive bomb so this is why i keep saying when you go to work and i don't work for other people now i'm a completely independent contractor in the world of art in the world as an author in the world of an entrepreneur and a mental health mentor completely independent I do not have a boss but when you go to work for a boss as so many of you will your boss needs to be very very careful because I have seen this so many times the boss where he or she thinks that they are above the law above the system because they own the business that that gives them the right to behave in whatever way they want and they can treat the employees and the staff however they want they can treat their um, associates however they want and they can treat those customers and clients that they do business with however they want and you're seeing this more and more now where this is actually coming back to bite people in the face 
I knew the story, I'll, I'll share this with you quickly to, to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make here, um, and hopefully it'll be far more eloquent. I was uh, up in Port Glasgow several years ago, and uh, we, we have a... There, there was, back, back in the day when I was working in the drop-in centres for, for drug users and alcoholics and you know people with day-to-day -day living issues, I think they're called now. And... And this normally took place in Ayr, I did one in Huddersfield, which I was very much a part of. Um, and this one took place in Port Glasgow, which if you've ever been to Port Glasgow, it's uh, um, a very, I would say, poor area. There's a lot of gang violence and stuff that's there, a lot of drug use, a lot of alcohol, probably prostitution as well, that, that happens up there. And I'm having this lovely conversation with this guy, and, and a meeting's about to start, and uh, it was... We used to have what they call Broken Chains meetings, which was an organization that was set up to uh, to help people with these day-to-day -day living issues. They provide meals for them, they provide counsel and conversation, um, and, and a Christian message as well. It was a Christian charity that it had set up. And there was one that was very similar in Port Glasgow. So anyway, uh, this night, uh, I don't know, maybe three of us, including myself, went up to this, uh, to, to this center. And I'm sitting there, I'm having a very nice conversation, a cup of tea with this gentleman. And, uh, and the, the speaker, I forget, uh, you know, the, the person leading it, um, sort of says, right folks, come on, we're, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna begin, we're gonna do this, that, the other. And uh, I mean, this, the, the leader, you know, I mean, he looked like a hardened criminal. <laughs> he really did. Uh, it was it was most amusing. So anyway, I, I finished my conversation with this very pleasant gentleman and my friends come and sit next to me and. And the music begins, the worship music and everything begins, and, and we all sing our songs. And uh, after that, the, uh, the, the uh, leader of the, the meeting stood up and said, Well, you know, we're going to now hear from whatever the gentleman's name was, and uh, who's going to share his story with us. Uh, now, this is a bit graphic, folks, for those of you that, you know, um, have young ones in the, 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 uh, the, the building and things, so just to be aware. And the person that I had been talking to stood up. Now, I thought he was going to the loop, but he actually stood up and walked to the front and, uh, and proceeded to tell us how his boss had uh, stiffed him, and by stiffed him, I mean refused to pay, uh, refused to pay him his wage. And, uh, you know, basically how this was maybe like the third or fourth time, and he promised himself on the third time, if he does this again, I'm going to stab him. I am going to stab this guy. And uh, he, uh, he, he the, the boss stiffed him again the next week, so the guy pulled out a screwdriver and stabbed the guy. <laughs> he, yeah, I mean, literally. Uh, and I'm thinking, I've just had this really pleasant, lovely conversation with this man. Uh, it, it was completely and utterly from, you know, from left to center. Uh, but it illustrates my point, you know, that was a really nice guy. I mean, he had a family, he had, you know, so much that was there. And the, and the meeting went on, obviously, he then tells you how, you know, Jesus came into his life and, and all of these things and how he was saved and, uh, you know, found salvation and all, all of that kind of stuff. But it illustrates my point so much that you go to work to be a cog in a machine. You do not go to work ever to be abused, to be verbally assaulted, to be manipulated, to be beaten, to be punished, to be... Uh, mentally scarred, you should never ever be going to work, you know, with such levels of anxiety that you literally want to die. Um, and such levels of anxiety that you can't think, how do I get through this day? And yet, so many people are. I know I was. I would work uh, for this organization two days a week, uh, the, the, one of my last church placements, I would work two days a week. And I would be filled with so much anxiety because it was so badly managed. It was so badly run. We needed more people. We needed more bodies. You know, our organizations were growing, all of that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it, it literally got to a point where it was like, how the heck do we do this? And I was terrified. I mean, I really, really was terrified. And the thing is, you put somebody in fear for enough time in enough years and then you've got a boss who's you know bullying on on top of that and i use that word very literally uh verbally you know and it, and it wasn't anything that was you know direct like you're this you're that you're there although there were certain times um but it would be little snide remarks little snide things and when it was brought up 
Um, and I very aggressively brought it up during one of my final meetings. The people, or one of the persons in particular, and said, well, that's just the way that he is. And I said, well, in that case, he's a uh, dot, dot, dot. And I won't repeat what I said, because it was, uh, I was a different person in those days, and, uh, and I thought very, very differently. But this illustrates my point, that when you get somebody who has experienced a massive amount of trauma, a massive amount of stress and pressure and worry and anxiety and bullying and negative, 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 negative for so many years, all going on and on and on and on and on, it is no surprise at all in my mind why people do the most insane of acts and, uh, you know, some very insane things, you know, ran through my mind at one time or another um, that I never carried out, of course, uh, thankfully. Uh, but, but sometimes you wonder, it's like, you know, it, it, it's dangerous. It's very, very, very dangerous. And you wonder how many people walking around our streets right now doing the exact same thing. You know, the bin man that, that you know, um, crashed his bin into, uh, I think, either passed out or whatever it was. Um, you know, and he wasn't trying to kill anybody. But again, that level of stress that was there. And how many people have uh, gone into work and, and shot their boss or stabbed their boss or, you know, threatened to blow up the place and things, you know, the world over. Um, and this is happening. This is happening a lot. So... To, to answer, I suppose, to, to, to your original question, to bring this um, segment to uh, to a close, if I may, um, when someone asks me, is it a surprise uh, that somebody would behave like that? Knowing what I know and knowing what I know of the person, probably not. Probably not. You know, um, trauma will do some very, very nasty things to people's brains. And um, not to excuse anything that's gone on, but I don't know necessarily you could blame the person because I don't know that they are in control any longer. See, I mean, it's always a hard one, that, because, you know, if, if they're not in control, then who is? Um, but all I can say is obviously what I've got right here, right now, and what I feel and what I'm hearing and thinking. I think you have to place some of the responsibility at a person's feet and say, look, you are responsible for taking care of you. You are responsible for uh, your own self-management, your own inner engineering. No one is going to do this for you. But with that level of thought, with that level of trauma, with that level of mental illness, once it takes root, it's like a cancer, it spreads. Um, I don't know that the person is necessarily thinking clearly, cognitively. Um, and if they are, they're focused on really, really deep, dark stuff. Um, so while it's not a surprise, the only person that can heal the person is themselves, uh, quite honestly, and, uh, and I think that's, that's, that's where it begins. What do you think, John, that uh, should be done with regards to medication for these kind of situations? I think medication is always, um, almost like, to me, it's always like a last option. Uh, when you're medicating someone, it means that, you know, all other things have failed, you know, or all other, th or all other attempts and avenues have failed. Um, for certain people, you know, I do believe, you know, they're going to reach that point and they're not going to, you know, they, they, they float around, you know, we talked about this before, you know, you float around with temptation, you float around with, you know, uh, all these different things and then there comes a point where you don't come back, you know, from that. You are eternally lost to whatever it is. It takes hold. Your, your genetic DNA cellular structure, which is a big mouthful of words, um, literally, you know, takes hold of, uh, you know, that area in your life that you've become. For me, it was spirituality. Again, it could have gone many other ways. I could have very easily been an alcoholic. Uh, you know, very, very easily. And that is why these days I do not touch a single drop. 
Um, I never ever allow alcohol to, to cross my lips uh, because I know, you know, I, I come from a family, you know, that have had battles with alcohol and, um, and, and other areas. Uh, and I've seen it, I've seen it so often. And uh, it, is, it is dangerous. It, it is very, very dangerous. And it is, it is so freely available. It's amazing. Here's, here's a funny thing for you, Bill. Um, and, and for everybody listening, you know, I find it really interesting that the most addictive drugs and the most damaging of drugs known to man are perfectly legal. And as long as you've got the money, you can buy them. And people say, well, you can't buy cocaine. And it's like, well, cocaine is not, believe it or not, is not the most addictive drug. The actual, the, the most addictive drug is pornography. <laughs> yeah, people don't think about that. And you see how many thousands and millions of lives it rots every single year. Uh, how many families it completely destroys every single year. How many rapes, how many... Uh, murders, how many sex offenders, how many paedophiles, how many sex traffic workers, how many fill in the blank, it all stems from pornography. Because what happens is, we've talked about this before, I think on, on the Battles Real Face podcast, uh, but what happens is, you know, again, you are sowing seeds into your brain with everything that you watch, everything that you see, everything that you hear. Um, and they also seeds and they're all going to come out in some way, which is again another reason that I do not spend any great deal of time online. Uh, TikTok now has become basically a legal um, porn site. You, you, you know, and, and it's been reported on this. This is the amazing thing that you study as a social scientist. Um, that young girls usually um, are more than happy you know, to, to put up videos and stuff of, you know, pictures of themselves. Um, and you know, it's like, why? Because it's a deep-rooted cry for attention. Because if the people aren't getting, or if, if the girls aren't getting likes, um, then they feel that they are insignificant, they feel that they aren't seen, uh, and, and you know, it, it becomes such a, a horrific thing. So, but to get back, before we get too far away, to, to get back to your original point about medication, um, medication to me is, is the last result and it should be the last result but sorry i i, I, I trouble with it so so the most addictive things as i say is, is pornography is legal alcohol is legal um certain forms of drug stimulants narcotics and stimuli are legal um you know and you can go and buy them and yeah and cigarettes and vaping and, and all the other stuff that's there and it's legal and yet it is some of the most damaging and soul-destroying, family-destroying, family-ripping-apart, um, you know, substances and, 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 you know, different stimuli and things that, that you can, you know, uh, that you can have. And it's legal. And it's legal. Which tells me that, you know, oh, this has become such a big problem, I know, let's just make it legal because it makes everything better. And we'll arrest the people that are paedophiles, we'll arrest the people that are sex offenders, we'll arrest the people that are rapists. How about you go arrest the people that are from Google and from Yahoo <laughs> for allowing it to be up there? How about you go arrest the parents for putting images of their children on, on the internet, on social media? But this is never ever the cause. See what I mean? People are always arresting and they're always talking bad about the people who's committed the offense, but they never ever talk about the people who actually made it possible for it to happen. Isn't that, isn't that marvellous? You know, isn't that marvellous? And that's from a genius mind deduction. That's what I've just given you. That's where all the problems begin, you know, is, is not taking responsibility and saying, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have actually put that up there. Hmm, maybe we should actually get rid of pornography on the internet. Grant, if people are going to see it, they're going to see it. Yes, they will find it. They're the ones you need to be concerned about. Because they're the ones that are going to do anything to get pornography in their lives. I'm sorry, it, it needs to go. It, it's as simple as that. Um, you know, but, but it won't because people are like, oh, but I like it. It, it. But it changes your personality. The way our world is, is a direct reflection of our inner state of being. And our personal world is a direct reflection of our inner state of being, which basically means how we are on the inside is going to be reflected on the outside. It is that simple. It really, truly is. 
And that is why we live in a world filled with debauchery, filled with sex, filled with violence, filled with murders, filled with rapes, and a lot of it, your six-year-old son or daughter is playing it on their Xbox or on their PS5. Again, all these things you don't know about. So to, to, to round out, because um, I know that we're getting close to time here, um, I think it is very, very important that if medication is going to be used, it is going to be used because all other avenues have been explored. I think medication needs to be used only when all other avenues have been explored and not as a first result because either you don't have the time or the or you can't be bothered or the resources aren't there or, or whatever it might be. We need to have people that are properly trained in our society. And by that I mean properly trained that are willing to explore and say, okay, you've got colitis, what could be the cause? Hmm. Well, when you eat this, this and this, what happens? When you're under stress, what happens? When you, you know, are partaking of a certain activity, what happens? But that doesn't happen. It's a case of, right, okay, here's suppositories, stick your finger up your bum, uh, take these pills twice a day, and, you know, we'll, we'll monitor you, you know, every couple of years. You know, when a person has anxiety, it, 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 again, it's a case of, you know, well, here's beta blockers. Which, and these are things that I actually was prescribed, by the way, um, just, just so you know. Uh, but here's beta blockers, which causes internal bleeding if you have colitis. Um, and there was another drug that I was prescribed, which again caused internal bleeding if you have colitis. Uh, and I was prescribed them. I was prescribed them both because I was really struggling with the side effects from prednisone or prednisolone steroids that I was given to combat my uh, or, or my body's um, colitis. How crazy is it? Now I know. Yes, it's fine. Balance. You know, you only, again, you only want to use those in extreme conditions as a last resort. You do not just want to be, you know, handing out pills just willy nilly. Because they have extreme, extreme um, side effects. And um, I think drugs are just far too easily dished out nowadays. I th and I think that's starting to change a little bit now. I'm, I'm certainly hoping it is. Um, but, but I do think that the reality is that medication should be given as a last resort when other things have been explored. Um, if, a per, if, if, if a patient or a client is expressing, uh, you know, all the signs and symptoms of, you know, this, you know, like severe mental disturbance, um, then I would probably say, okay, you know, that it, it may need to be looked at in the short term while we try and get this under control. But I think now that there is so much mental issue that's going on and so many mental health issues that are going on, you know, I, I genuinely question, it, it's not a case of can we get back from this, because of course we can. You know, if we can survive an ice age, we can survive COVID, we can survive all these other things, of course we can. You can change the world like that if you really want to, if people really want to change. Um, but this is the reality in which we are presented with. Um, we live in a world where people are battling anxiety and mental health disorders every single day because they've been told they're battling mental health disorders every single day. They've been told that it's normal. It is not normal. It is not normal at all. If I broke my leg, you know, and the bone was sticking through, would you say, oh, that's normal? No, of course you wouldn't. If I was bleeding, in, you know, internally as a result of colitis, would you say, oh, let's do something about that? Or, oh, that's just normal. Don't worry about it. Of course you wouldn't. And yet we do this with mental health issues because they are so poorly taught and because they are so poorly understood. People end up on medication that they should never have been given and they end up on medication that goes on for years and years and years. So th this is the reality that I think needs to radically change and to finish with uh, inner engineering and self-mastery and self-management needs to be taught from the time, you know, children are little babies. They need to basically come out into the world learning this stuff, which means the parents need to do the work, you know, which means that the workers and the employees, uh, sorry, and the employers 
need to actually fixate a little bit more on taking care of one another rather than just trying to turn a buck which will historically just turn to zero anyway um, it is going to take a massive change to happen in our world it is possible but it all begins with you and I think if people became more selfish and dealt with themselves a little bit more and took care of themselves a little bit more first um, before making all these excuses, oh, they don't have time and they don't have this. If you've got time to get drunk, watch pornography, um, you know, watch TV trash and all the other stuff that's on there, you've got time to spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes on an evening when the kids have gone to bed taking care of you. It is all a choice and it is all a question of priority. And, uh, and that is what I want to leave everybody with uh, today. We want to thank you for being here with us, and uh, Bill, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, uh, to, to you know, bring this in. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the weekend, folks, and uh, you know, I hope to come back and do this soon. Uh, thank you very much. Take care. God bless. Namaste, my folks.